Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 74, and what I'd like to do today is solve a problem two different ways. We've been talking about how energy is just another way to look at problems that we've already visited. In fact, some of the equations are just conglomerates of a multi multitude of equations we already know. So why would we use energy versus other methods if we already know those methods? Well, what we're going to do today is go back to projectile motion. And we're going to solve a projectile motion problem using the traditional method. And then we're going to be able to find the projectile motion problem again using energy. And we'll see which method is more efficient and maybe which method is, is easier. The bottom line is, it's all a matter of preference. But you will see that one method definitely outshines the other in terms of efficiency. And of course, we haven't done projectile motion in a while, so it's good to revisit older concepts so that you refresh your memory and your review. Ultimately, you're going to have to use all these tools in one big assessment, and you're going to have to make the decision what type of uh, equations to use and what methods to use. So let's revisit projectile motion for a moment and see if the traditional method or this new energy method might be preferable. Let's get out the whiteboard now. For this next one, I'd like to revisit projectile motion. And what we're going to do is solve this problem using projectile motion where we have a projectile being fired off of a hill that's 280 meters in the air, kind of a, ha a mountain, and it's going to fly through the air and land on the ground. And what we want to do is determine the speed of the projectile when it's going to hit the ground. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is resolve that 300 meters per second at 43 degrees into X and Y components. So we're going to have to use for the X component 300 times the cosine of 43. So 300 times the cos of 43 is 219.41 meters per second. In the Y direction it's going to be 300 meters per second times the sine of 43 degrees. So 300 times the sine of 43 and I get 204.6 meters per second. Now if you remember back when we did projectile motion what we had to do was make a givens list in both the X and the Y direction. Now the X, the V is 219.41 meters per second and in the Y, the velocity is 204.6 meters per second. Now after that, we know that the acceleration in the X is zero. Acceleration in the Y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The D in the X, we don't know. And the D in the Y is negative 280 meters. Now, normally what we would do is find the time, plug it in on the other side, and then solve for D. But in this case, all we're concerned about is how fast it hits the ground. So, in order to find how fast it hits the ground, what we need to realize is there's going to be an X final velocity and a Y final velocity, and we're going to have to put them together and get the resultant. Now, the beauty of the X direction is that the acceleration is zero, so we don't have to worry about it changing. So the VF and the X is already 219.41 meters per second. We already know that. Now our goal is to find VF and the Y. Now the way to do that is if we know VI, A, and D, we can use equation 5. VF squared minus VI squared equals 2AD. VF is what we're looking for, minus 204.6 meters per second squared equals 2, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and the D in the Y is negative 280. So, the way we're going to do this is 204.6 squared, and get a quantity for that. That's going to be added to, 
So plus that answer, and in parentheses, 2 times 9.8 times 280. I'm going to get rid of the negatives because these two are going to combine to form a positive. Now the answer for VF is, or VF squared that is, is 47,349. So I need to take the square root of the answer and I get 217.6 meters per second. So VF here is 217.6 meters per second. Now once again, how do we put together two perpendicular vectors? Well, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I'm going to take 217 and square it, that's already in the calculator, plus 219.41 squared. I'm going to get an answer, 95,500. Take the square root of that, and that will get me the hypotenuse. So the V of the hypotenuse is 309 meters per second. Now I want you to look at all the work we had to do in order to get this one answer. And our answer is here in the box. What we're going to do next is try to find the same answer using energy instead of projectile motion. And we'll see which one's more efficient. Now we're going to look at the same problem again with the projectile using energy instead of projectile motion. Now with energy, we have to decide what type of energy it has at the top and what type of energy it has at the bottom. What I'm going to do is define zero as the ground. So that means it has at the top both potential and kinetic, so peaky. And then at the bottom, it's only going to have kinetic energy, so just key. Now, we have no idea what the mass of the projectile is, but we know PE is MGH plus one half MV squared equals one half MV squared. The masses cancel, and we're left with GH, so 9.8 meters per second squared. The height is 280 plus one half. The mass we don't know, but the velocity is 300 meters per second. Quantity squared equals one half V squared. Now, the reason we didn't have to break that into components is because kinetic energy is concerned with the speed, not the velocity. So we don't have to worry about perpendicular vectors or anything like that. It's just the scalar quantity. Now, at this point, all we know or all we don't know is V squared. So let's take the 9.8 times 280, add that number, parentheses, 0.5 times 300 squared, close parentheses. This whole term is 47744, and that's going to equal 1 half V squared. Divide that number by 0.5, take the square root, and you get V to be 309 meters per second. Much less work using energy as a consideration because we only worry about the speed, not the velocity. So the scalar aspect of kinetic energy can make some problems a lot easier. We're not as angry when we see angles and we don't have to break the legs of the vector.